right, we are here today on this gloomy day on the northwest side of Chicago near Schiller Park, Harwood Heights, to uh, St. Joseph Cemetery. Catholic Cemetery. And we're in. This is the Schusler family plot. And uh, all I can say is this man, Anton J., lost everything in a matter of a, an instant. He lost uh, his son Anton Jr. and his son John who were both murdered by a scumbag named Kenneth Hansen. He was convicted of that crime 30 years later. When he was 22, he took these boys along with another boy, Peterson. They were uh, hitchhiking their way from Jefferson Park area. They, were, they had just watched a movie, uh, a Disney movie, the African Lion, and it stopped at the bowling alley on Montrose Avenue, and were hitchhiking their way back up this way. And this scumbag, 22-year-old Kenneth Hansen at the time, who is now deceased, served the rest of his years in Pontiac Prison. And he, uh, he lured them, presumably, to come to this area, and by the way, the, the stables are just to the north here a few miles. I came from there. They're not there anymore, of course. And he lured them there under the pretense to see the horses. And uh, apparently he sexually assaulted Anton and John, and the Peterson boy saw it and Things got out of control, and then, and then uh, they were murdered. And I, it's probable that it was more than you know, more people. I mean, one person. How do you handle? How do you handle uh, three boys that are teenagers? So the bodies were. Uh, pre it was Silas Jane's Idle Hour Stables. Silas Jane helped Kenneth put the bodies in the uh, station wagon. They were covered with horse fertilizer or, or fertilizer and horse feed, I guess. Naked, dumped them in the woods right up here, Robertson Woods, literally a half mile from here or a mile, and left them there. And they got away. He got away with it for a lot of years. But then things blew up. In the 70s, when Helen Brock, Helen Voorhees Brock, the Candy Harris, the widow, disappeared, and this whole horse mob, horse, uh, they would they would torture, they would electrocute horses, kill them for insurance money, they would defraud old widows that were millionaires, all kinds of and mob stuff. Uh, the Silas Jane was just a bad, bad guy. But my gosh, Anton died. Ant, the father died one month after this happened. Can you imagine the heartbreak? And Eleanor lives to 1986. She must have had a life sentence. Uh, well, they're all together now. And I'm hoping, uh, we are all hoping they're resting peaceful. Ironically, the barn that was here where the boys were murdered was uh, mysteriously burned down like a year later by Silas James, probably. And they collected the, uh, the insurance money. So, uh, definite, it was suspected arson, so no doubt that's what happened. Sad day here. And you know, a lot of bad stuff happened around here. I actually worked when I was in the 70s uh, down the street this way, about a mile, at a architectural firm on Higgins, at uh, just east of Cumberland, and uh, John Wayne Gacy, who we've all heard of, uh, was just down the street on Sunnyvale. 
think down Cumberland, literally a quarter to a half mile away from where I was at. Uh, just a crazy area here. I just saw this on the side of the road. The uh, it's, uh, I know it was Robinson Woods. This is where the uh, three boys were dumped. Uh, this is called the Robinson Family Burial Ground. Boy, this is an old sign. Stroger hasn't been around for 20 years. Um, this is a burial ground for, pro looks like a famous family. The Robinson family. Oh boy, the glare on this is really, really bad. Maybe if I go straight on. Here we go. All right. That was uh, Chief Alexander Robinson. And I guess there's gravestones back there. Mary Ann Robinson Rager. Rager. Died in 1927. He died in 1872. Uh, so I'm not going to go back there. Looks like there's just a monument. Uh, but this is this is the uh, this is the area where uh, the boys were dumped. I don't know exactly where, but right in here, somewhere. While I'm here at St. Joseph Cemetery, I thought I would look up this gentleman. Son, Lester J. Gillis, died on November 27, 1934, age 26 years. And he is here with his wife, Ellen. Do you know who he is? This is Babyface Nelson, the famous outlaw. He was killed in Barrington in a shootout with police. <laughs> He, in fact, also was with Dillinger up at Little Bohemia, northern Wisconsin, Manitowish Waters, in the famous shootout with the G-Men, Melvin Purvis there. This guy was a bad, bad, angry, cop-killing robber, murderer. His father is Joseph, who died in 1924 at the age of 55. His mother lived to be 82. And uh, she, uh, she died in 1961. And uh, he had a sister who was 25 years old. She died uh, before him in 1918. But yeah, this guy, uh, this guy was infamous. Babyface Nelson. <laughs> 